All right, what is going on my stock market bulls and bears? I am your host, Terry, and welcome to the channel. By the dip, that's right, guys. Today we have an interview with the CEO of Tonix Pharmaceuticals, ticker symbol TNXP. That's right, we got a penny stock here. It is a dollar stock. We have covered this stock on the channel before, and right now, as of today, you can get this for $1.09. Price of a cheeseburger, you know what I'm saying. Uh, McDonald's large fountain soda, you can get this as well. Now, guys, we know the market's been a little crazy as of late. Um, if we do look back here in February, this was a $2 stock before kind of around all this crashing in the market. So there is a potential double up here. Have a little extra cash around. You're thinking about you may want to take a gamble on something. This could be one. Uh, you're going to listen to the CEO talk about the developments that they got and their products and coming close to a vaccine. So they could be really, really exciting at a dollar nine, you know, around a dollar. This is looking pretty interesting. So guys, hope you all enjoyed today's video. If you uh, do enjoy it, please remember to hit a thumbs up. Uh, shows you guys really support the channel. And guys, hope you all enjoy the interview with, interview with the CEO. Peace. Tonics Pharmaceuticals just finished a trial of its COVID vaccine on animals. And with me is the CEO, Seth Letterman, to explain the findings. So, Seth, I took a quick look at these. It looks pretty good. Can you go into detail about what your trial results were with this COVID vaccine? Thanks, Jane. We're very excited. We tested our vaccine on non-human primates in the experiment where we vaccinated the animals with our vaccine versus two controls either a sham vaccine or a vaccine that was closely related but, but wasn't designed to protect against COVID. And in the fourth quarter of last year, we announced very encouraging results about the immune response that these um, non-human primates mounted. But today we announced that the vaccinated animals were protected against COVID-2. COVID-2 is the virus that causes COVID-19. So uh, the, the top line of the results that was issued today was six days later, which is a relevant time in this animal model, the vaccinated animals uh, had undetectable levels. So, and, and in, in contrast, the animals that were not vaccinated or were vaccinated with a control vaccine had much more. Very interesting. Well, no, we now we heard kind of as we've been studying all this, you know, 94% effective. 90, do, do you have a number on that yet, or are you at that point? That's a great question. Unfortunately, we can't get that kind of information from this model because these animals uh, don't get as sick from COVID as humans do. But the, the model that we use is very similar to the models that were used by the EUA vaccines, for example, and all the other vaccines. And uh, we won't have that kind of number until we get into humans, because we have to just look at the amount of virus we can detect instead of looking at how healthy or sick the animals get. Now, when we talked last time, um, you had explained a little bit about your goals for this vaccine that it might be something that it could be used every year. I mean, kind of explain how this would fit into the whole COVID vaccine ecosystem. That's a great question. The three EUA vaccines, EUA stands for emergency use authorization. And I think everyone now knows that they would be the Pfizer vaccine, the um, Moderna vaccine, and the J&J &J vaccine. Uh, they're all very important. And, and I first want to say that it's with great effort to get them approved. I personally am one dose into the Pfizer vaccine. I urge everyone to get the vaccine as quickly as they are eligible um, to get it in their state or community. But um, despite the remarkable achievements of Operation Warp Speed and the potential of these vaccines, they are first generation vaccines. And there are important questions left about these vaccines. We just don't know. The most important is durability. How long will someone be protected? So we don't know, will they only be protected for six months, for nine months? I mean, for me, that's a very good trade-off because I want to be protected for six months. But on the other hand, there are older, more established techniques of vaccination 
that can provide years or decades of protection. So while the EUA vaccines, the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines are called mRNA vaccines, those are completely novel technology. And the J&J vaccine called AD26 is almost as new, although it was half of a vaccine that was used in Africa for Ebola, but essentially, at least with an American experience, new. So we just don't know the durability. One of the great advantages of those vaccines is how quickly they could be developed. And thank goodness, because hopefully they're making an impact already, because so, you know, over 100 million people, I believe, in the United States have gotten their first dose. Mm -hmm. But it's no time to be complacent. We can't get a year from now and realize that the protection from these is only six months. We need other technologies. Also, after the pandemic, we expect COVID to be endemic, meaning that humans are going to coexist with COVID for the rest of the time that humans are on Earth. And that means that like measles, mumps, and rubella, we probably will have to adopt a strategy of vaccinating children against COVID. So we are thinking in terms of that kind of vaccine, ultimately a childhood immunization that could be broadly deployed and tip the balance of this, you know, sharing the earth with COVID, tip it in our favor in the same way that the MMR vaccine, the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine has tipped that balance in our favor. And our technology, in contrast to Pfizer, Moderna, and um, J&J, which are new technologies, ours is the oldest technology. Literally, the first vaccine was a vaccine to protect against smallpox developed by Edward Jenner in 1796. We believe that our horsepox vector is closely related to the virus that Edward Jenner used. That virus provides years, decades of protection. And it was the most successful vaccine ever because it eradicated smallpox, the only viral disease ever eradicated. So we're taking the best part of the old virus vaccine technology and applying it to this new threat. So I think that that's why we're, we're very different. Very interesting. So the vaccine is called TNX-1800, correct? So yeah. what's next? What's next is we hope to uh, study humans this year. And the gating item for that is manufacturing TNX-1800 in a quality suitable for human investigation. So that's our big priority. And now we really feel that's the one hurdle left for us to jump through. Uh, particularly now that we have what we think is compelling data in the uh, non-human primate animal model. So we are guiding that in the second half, we expect to do human phase one trials. So we're rushing towards that goal. And what are your objectives for 2021? Well, the most important objective as we discussed is to bring home the rally study, the confirmatory phase three study in fibromyalgia, which with a positive study, uh, you know, a drug ready for NDA, you know, would be transformative to our company. Um, the other thing, uh, the other big thing we're hoping for, again, something we talked about, is to get our COVID-19 vaccine, TNX 1800, into a phase one human study. Okay, well, thank you. Very interesting update, Seth, and best of luck. And please come back and update us as these trials and studies go on throughout the year. Thank you very much for your interest. Thank you.